drop, drop it. Welcome to another edition of Morse World TV. I'm your brother, Tahaka Bay. We here in Gwen Oak at the Happy Nappy in the Park Day family. Of all questions that come through here, some people say, who are you? Some people say, oh, I watch Morse World TV. But whatever the case may be, we got a brother come up here. Brother, what's your name? Yashayahu, Lev Ari. Now, I ain't gonna baby say all that, but let me say, I'm gonna try to get it right, brother. Say it slow for me. Yashayahu. Yashayahu. Brother, God, give me the short Yeah, so it's a, it's a no, uh, short version, Yeshaya is fine. Yeshaya, Yeshaya, thank you, brother. I'll tell you, the people know me on my show, I will butcher some words unintentionally, unintentionally. Got you, you know what I mean? But with that being said, brother, uh, I know that you know this because of the question that you asked, you notice that you've seen affairs, um, you probably seen the name Bay on my um, banner over there, and you asked the question, and what was that question you asked? The question is about not nationality but sovereignty explaining the whole concept explaining the whole concept of sovereignty and how we can take advantage of it all right slide over here a little bit what is your concept of sovereignty uh, according to according to what you whatever information you have it doesn't matter little lot middle whatever ground whatever ground you're on what is your understanding of it so i don't really have a whole lot of understanding of it basically that um as moorish citizens or as Moorish, you would not be a citizen of the United States, but basically a sovereign citizen of the Moorish Empire, I suppose. And, and as such, that you're not necessarily subject to the laws of the United States because of that. Now, I'm going to say some things, and brother, trust me, brother, I'm for my people, and I'm not being facetious. If that was true, how many brothers would use that to get out of prison right now? As many as possible. So that so 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 that got to be a margin of error. Would you agree? I agree. I agree. There's a total margin of error. And the margin of error is this: if you're born on this soil, by default you're a citizen. Do you agree with that? Um, according to the law, as far, as far as United States law, yes. According to the law, not saying if you can be whatever you want, but according to the law, whoever is born on this soil is by default a citizen. Correct. Yes, I agree. All right. So when one said that they are sovereign citizen, the, to be sovereign, to be sovereign, you must have some sort of government land or something. When a Moor says that they're sovereign and you said to the Moorish Empire, where is that land and where is their president, king or sultan? Uh huh. I don't know, honestly. Well, it doesn't exist. So this is an internet thing, uh -huh. just to be clear. This is an internet thing. There is no such thing as a Moorish American being a sovereign citizen. Say a this is, this has they been use a these things to say that uh, if you can buy this package from me, right. then you can become sovereign, and now you're not subject to the laws of the United States. Yet those same packages that people use get them locked up. Uh -huh. The right to travel, they go to jail. Right. So that is a farce. It's it's a it's a it's a bold faced lie. And one thing about me, brother, is that I'm here to clear up the lies. I've been a Moorish American proclaimed since 1990. Okay. And one of the reasons that I came to the forefront uh, to express what it really is because of stuff like this. Appreciate it. Do you understand? Uh -huh. Because my family is here. My family is Moorish American. My children are Moorish American. I don't want my children walking up the street getting busted upside of their head. Just as well, brother, uh, 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 what, what's your faith? I'm an Israelite. You're an Israelite. So, uh, what, what camp are you in? I don't deal with no camp. You don't deal with no camp. So say, for instance, somebody misjudged you and they don't like ISUPK and they judge you for ISUPK. Right. That wouldn't be fair, would it? No. It and that's so why I'm in the forefront. So you do, so no one will judge me for these internet crazies calling themselves Moorish Southerns when it has nothing to do with that. Okay. It has nothing to do okay. with that. So, so it's a so misinformation. Are, so, so ask so, me any of Okay, so I was taking a criminal justice class, CCBC, right? And so I asked the instructor, you know, what is it with this sovereign citizen thing? Is there something to this or is it just, you know, running off at the mouth? And so he actually said that there was something to it, but he didn't really want to get into it because it was kind of outside of the scope of the class that we were taking. Let me tell you what was to it. 
Back in the 90s when people was perpetuating this sovereign citizen Moorish ideal, the thing was is that the government or the police didn't know what they were up against. Uh -huh. And these people were shocked. There was wordsmith. There was no different than a pimp. A pimp, and when I say a pimp, I don't mean like they're pimping sisters or something, mean, but they're wordsmith. They're really good with the words. And not only that, they're really good with the laws. They know how to manipulate things okay. to articulate it and to make it say something. And so many of them, they show the right to travel passport, and then they drive off. Right. But we have we have an example. Uh, 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 most deaf. Most deaf used yeah, this passport and got stuck in South yeah, Africa. I was in South Africa. I know the people he got the passport from. Right. And he, he, he think he got a Moorish free right passport and brother now you stuck in South Africa But then the sad thing about it is is that he know that stuff is bogus But he never come back and speak on it to help other people that's fallen victim to it okay. So so when so when someone said it's something to it There was a period of time where the police would let people drive off there was a time where judges would say okay Okay, I get it. And then they will go back and check case law. And then when they now you get locked up, they already know the case law. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? For instance, you take right to travel. They said you got a right to travel and you don't need a driver's license, right? Where does that law come from? That law comes from horse and buggy from slave time. Okay. At slave time, a slave will leave the plantation. And when they leave the plantation, they get a note from the slave owner the slaveholder, and then if they get pulled over along the way, they say, oh no, I got a right to travel. Here is my travel passport okay. to travel. And there was a law back then. So now they superimpose that to say, you don't need a right to travel. You don't need a license to travel the roads. But just imagine if one of these people driving with no driver's license, no insurance, plow you and your family down, walking down the street, and you don't have no remedy. Right, right, uh-huh. No insurance, no nothing. Fake paper tags bought off the internet. So, so yeah, so bro, I get passionate about it because me being a Moorish American, I got a fa I got family invested. You okay. understand? Uh huh. So it's nothing really to it. Gotcha. I wouldn't mess with it. Got you. Because you know that sovereignty thing. It's not only an issue with the Moors. You know, it's it's white folks and everything that's dealing with that as well. Because because that's where it comes from. It originate with the white supremacist sovereign citizens. Okay. They superimpose that on Moorish. How they did it, I don't know. But originally, it started with Southerners who was disgruntled. They was disgruntled with the way of, the same like the Trumpers, yeah. the, the, the racist Trumpers. They're disgruntled with how the Democrats are doing things. And they're saying, this is our country. And we don't have to do what you're talking about. Yeah. Do you know what okay. I'm saying? But nevertheless, okay. when you're born you here, said, you're subject you're to the law. Saying, you're basically saying it doesn't have any kind of basis in fact. And if you not, take it to court, you're going to lose, you're going to get locked up. It has no basis in fact, no basis in truth. And at the end of the day, right, at the end of the day, in order to be a sovereign of another country, first you would have to expatriate of this country. Yeah. You cannot be, unless you got dual citizenship, but the country or whatever they're talking about doesn't even exist. Gotcha. They say the Moroccan Empire, where is it? Mm -hmm. Where is the king? Where's the sultan? Okay. You know what I mean? So, so then on, on that note, explain to me what does it mean to be a Moor to you? So to be a Moor, I, I'm a Moorish American proclaimed. Okay. So a Moorish American is one who is descendants of Moroccans and born in America. And when we say Moroccans, we're talking about the people that are indigenous to the land. Morocco, Morocco. And in Morocco, at the time, the people that we're talking about, there was not only Moors, there was Jews, there were, and when I say Jews, I'm talking about Hebrew Israelites was there also. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so these are the people that was an indigenous to the land of Northwest southwestern shores of Africa right okay. so now in America born in America we're subject to the laws on the on, in America however that these laws are some of the laws that we can untangle and unravel to get us up out of this situation okay. we should be able to establish ourselves as a community and unfold from a community into a nation right here okay. we, it, it's, it's possible we look at the Amish people do it all let the time you, let me ask you are you saying that Moors are native to the land of North America or I'm, are you saying we are descendant of people from the east that have been transported to this land of North America? I'm saying that it's both. I'm saying that it's both. For me, for example, my, my, my four parents, grandmother, great grandmother and all that, they can't remember a slave story. Mm -hmm. They just can't. You know what I mean? It's just what it is. However, 
that doesn't deny that we don't that don't mean I deny the fact that people were transported too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So it, it it's both. Okay. It's not one or the other. Gotcha. Some of us are indigenous yeah. here Indeed. and some of us are not. Right. It's just, it's just, it's not one or the other. Some of us, some of us will vibe with the Hebrew Israelite ideal mm -hmm. because that's in our genetic code. Right. And some of us is going to vibe with the Moorish ideal because it's in our genetic yeah, code. You. you understand what I'm uh -huh. saying? But it's a universal truth in yeah. both lessons Indeed. that need to be learned. Indeed. You know what I mean? And the thing about Moorish is talking about nationality. So it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't go over into the lane of a Hebrew Israelite okay. because it's strictly talking about nationality as it relates to this land. I also talk about nationality. So if so, when so when you say nationality, I like this. Let me ask you: when you say nationality, what do you? How do you reference nationality? When we say nationality, we are basically descendants of the nation of Israel, right? right? The uh, sons and daughters of Abraham, right? And so. It started off as a family, right? And then it grew into a tribe, and then it grew into a nation. So we represent it at the at the national level. You know what I mean? So, so are y'all are y'all are, are are you guys in the process of to reestablishing the nation of Israel from a nationality yeah. perspective? That's a good question. I mean, I ain't going to speak for a whole lot of other people. No, you, you know, only what I understand. You know, look. Um, it's a spiritual thing. It talks about in the book of Daniel that there was a, a stone that was cut out of this great mountain, you know what I mean, without hands. It was cast onto the earth and it became a great mountain itself, you know what I mean? And so that indeed is that nation of Israel that's prophesied to be reestablished. So, so, so we're on the same page. We're on the same page. So at the end of the day, when Ruth uh, uh, got with Boaz, the Moors and the Israelites were, were, became one nation. So we're on the same page, you know what I mean? And nationality, whether it's he, whether it's Israelite or whether it's Moorish, it's the same ideal. Yeah. It's just a different historicity that comes with it. Yeah. But the principles are still yeah, the same. I understand you, brother. I you understand, understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I get real passionate, brother. Yeah. I appreciate you from Baltimore. Yeah, I'm born and raised in Baltimore. Come on, bro, you got to catch up with me, bro, and do a stream with me. With that? Okay, no doubt. All right, no doubt. Peace. I appreciate you, bro. Yeah, man. Drop, drop it.